the Fitzroy River, right in the middle of Rockhampton in central Queensland. I've come here to put some mustard saltism treble hooks and mustard fishing accessories through their paces, and I couldn't have chosen a better destination for some serious tackle testing. This massive river system, the most extensive on Australia's east coast, is absolutely loaded with prime fish habitat. But finding fish in all of that country isn't always easy. Running a high quality depth sounder and knowing how to interpret it is a big key to unlocking the bounty of the Fitzroy. So is knowing what gear to use and where to cast it, not to mention reading the water. It's funny, after a couple of days of fishing these water conditions, you become quite adept at picking the different water. It all looks fairly muddy when you first arrive, but there's there's darker coloured water that you can see 50 or 60 centimetres in and then there's the milk coffee coloured water that you can only see about 10 centimetres into and the clearer stuff is definitely better for lure fishing. We're right on the edge of a colour change at the moment. On the absolute bottom of the tide, the tide's going to turn in the next half an hour or so and actually start to push in. Down south where I come from, an incoming tide would normally mean clean water getting pushed in from the ocean, but we're a long way from the ocean here, and there are a lot of mud flats between us and the ocean. So here, the incoming tide can actually mean dirtier water, and that's what it's doing to us at the moment. So we may have to turn around and chase these fish up with the front of the advancing tide. You've got to be mobile, and you've got to be thinking about what you're doing. Fishing these soft vibes isn't particularly hard, Get them out there, make absolutely sure you get the vibe to the bottom. And that can be a little bit hard to pick when there's a bit of wind and a bit of tide. But if you watch the belly of the line, when the lure hits the bottom, it'll relax ever so slightly, just for a moment, and you know you've made contact with the bottom. So then wind up the slack, make contact with the lure. And I'm fishing this quite subtly today. I'm just a little lift, follow it back down, get back onto the bottom again, little lift, follow it back down. So that vibe's going up through the water and then it's also swimming on the way back down. And in fact, it's on the way back down that it'll usually get eaten. Not all the time, they'll hit it on the lift as well. But you've got to be really on the ball and in this wind, watch the belly of line. You might only see a little pick and I'm pretty adept at that after a lot of years of brim fishing. And there's a lot of parallels with fishing for brim on soft plastics and vibes. A little bit different once you get the hook in though, a bit bigger fish and a fair bit stronger. But it can be quite a subtle take. The barrel will usually hit a little bit harder, but these threadies can be very, very gentle at times. So stay on the ball, work it all the way back. I can see on the sounder that we've got fish right under the boat, so I'm in no hurry. I'll just do a few lifts and drops right under the back of the boat. And then I still won't just rip it in. I'll just wind it off the bottom because they might hit it then and wind it all the way up and then as soon as you can see it, look in the water behind it just to make sure there's not a fish following it and then fire out another cast. You might have to do that two, three, four hundred times in the course of a day. But I'll tell you what, it's worth it when that line comes up tight and takes off. There's some big fish in here. fish all over the sounder. It's just a matter of working on them. I've lightened up a little bit, gone to a bit lighter leader, smaller lure. It's only got quite lightweight hooks. They're um, little saltism mustards. They're quite fine gauge, so I'm not going too hard on this fish. But sometimes you've just got to go light to get the hooker. Nice thready. Look at the colours of that fish. Beautiful. You can see I've gone for quite a bright, luminous looking lure. It's quite similar to the colours of the thread fin. Beautifully pinned just on the front treble. And they often take it head first. Ooh. Look at those whiskers. 
I'm using my mustard floating lip grippers to safely secure this fish. Not a big thread fin, but a beautiful specimen all the same. Just pinned perfectly on that little number six mustard saltism hook. Small hook, but sharp. And these fish are biting so softly at the moment, they're just not really switched on at all and you've got to go light. A bit of finesse works even up in these northern waters. Brim tactics in the north. The combination of mustard's locking lip grippers and a pair of mustard long nose pliers makes the unhooking process much safer for me and the fish. Alright mate. Oh you're ready to go aren't you? Here they go. I actually moved off those fish to release that last thread fin. A bit worried sometimes about releasing fish right on top of other fish. They can take them away. It doesn't hurt just to go out 50 metres and let the fish go. And I put a waypoint on the GPS and I've come back into it now. And sure enough, we're starting to see a few fish on the sounder again. Woohoo! <laughs> Crazy bite. That fish ate that lure and came straight towards me. It was just like someone had cut my line. Suddenly there was no lure weight there. I wound into him and struck, and there he was. Got the flight coming in to Rockhampton Airport over our heads here, right in the middle of the city. This is urban fishing at its best. Woo! Erratic fighters, very, very fast fish. Threadfin, when they, when they engage that big tail and take off, but they're also incredibly erratic. You think you've lost them and then they're on again and they're all over the place, double back on themselves. Such good fun. And there it is, another beautiful threadfin salmon. These guys are at least as good a sport fish as a barra. And they have a lot of charisma too. They're just a, a great fish, really unusual fish. They belong to a, a large family of threadfins that are found all around the world. There's a very, very big one lives in Africa, grows to about 50 kilos. This one is called a golden thread fin, you can see why, or a king thread fin or a thread fin salmon. It's got lots of names depending on where you catch it. The biggest characteristic are those whiskers. And you can see they're actually filaments that come out of the fish in front of the pectoral fins and they're loaded with sensory organs, taste buds, and the fish use them in this discoloured water to find prawns and small fish. Gotcha. All right. Now I've got my mustard pliers here. So I'll just clear the, the hooks if I can. Oh. That. <laughs> yeah, thread fin salmon. Definitely not a second prize. They are a fantastic fish. These lightweight hooks, they go in easily, but they also come out quite easily. Here we go. Out of the way, look at those whiskers reaching forward, and that's what they do. When they round up prawns and bait, they actually feel ahead of themselves with those whiskers and round up the prawns. Jelly prawns they particularly love, the little, little tiny jelly prawns. They can be hard to catch when they're on those. Right, mate, I'll get you back in the water. Here we go. Ooh, you're ready to go. Yep. To find out more about Mustard's great saltism trebles, floating lip grips, and their full range of fishing tools and accessories, visit the Mustard website at the address shown here. Until next time, tight lines.